Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our afternoon webinar uh, with ServiceBot and AA Insurance. Delighted to welcome you all. Uh, as we do with all of these webinars, we're going to give a couple of minutes for people to log in. I can see people actively logging in. So hi to Niall and Michal and Paul and Simon and Stephen. Great to see you all there. Um, on screen, you, you see Cormac Farrelly of WSI, who as always are supporting us on this webinar. Carl McGlynn of uh, ServiceBot, who's one of our main presenters today. And obviously delighted to welcome Dee Roberts of AA Insurance, who is going to share a really insightful case study with us today on this webinar. Um, as with all the webinars, we're really keen to have as, as engaging as possible. So first and foremost, if you could just give me a heads up to let me know you can hear and see us OK. And as we go along, I know both Cahal and Dee are happy to take questions. So just put them in the chat bot or the questions uh, uh, window there to the side and I keep an eye out for them. Uh, hi, Sean, I see you logging in there. Um, so please do make this as interactive as possible, because I think this topic is a really interesting topic for members, given the current situation and the new ways of working and how companies are looking for new channels for contacts and redirecting calls uh, in many cases. So, so please do make it as interactive as possible and put your questions up there. Um, as always, a copy of the presentation will be available in the members area uh, straight after this event, and it's open to everybody, so not just members. Uh, and the recording of today's webinar, it normally takes us a few hours, so we'd hope that that'll be up uh, certainly tomorrow morning, uh, and we, we let you know that it's there so you can access that. And I'm sure uh, Carl and uh, Dee will be happy if anybody wants to drop them an email with any more detailed questions, uh, just let me know and send me the email and I can forward it on to them. So just waiting for a couple of more people, and uh, this is great to see everybody on time. So thanks, hi Shane, I see you joining there. Um, so uh, I'm just looking, it's 14.02, I'm gonna bow out and I will hand over to Carl. Thanks, Carl. Uh, thanks, Dorothy. Um, thanks very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's morning time over here in the US. Uh, so at least you're going to get the perspective of COVID from two sides of the Atlantic. Dee's going to tell you what it's like to be in Ireland. Uh, I'm going to tell you what it's like sort of to be here. Um, so, Cormac, if you just move to the next slide, uh, just to introduce our uh, presenter uh, today, um, we're delighted to have Dee Roberts. Dee is a uh, director of contact center transformation at the AA. Uh, Dee also has a, um, a long background in contact centers, having previously worked uh, with Hertz. I'm sure she'll introduce herself and tell a little bit about it. So she's uh, eminently qualified to talk about the topic that we're going to um, discuss today. Um, uh, myself, I'm the uh, uh, CEO and founder of ServiceBot. Uh, I'm actually based in the States, although as you can tell, this is not a Boston accent. Uh, and you, some of, I may have met some of you before when we presented uh, a couple of months back uh, with Dorothy. And thanks, Dorothy, again for hosting us. Um, so today's agenda. Uh, I mean, these are sort of strange times that we live in. Um, I'm going to give for those of you who are new just a very brief uh, introduction to ServiceBot. Um, but really what we're here to talk about is to listen to uh, Dee and her story about how one company reacted to uh, this COVID-19. Um, and there is no doubt that it's had a huge impact on contact centers. Um, so we're going to look at a little bit about uh, that. I'll give you some perspectives of what's happening here in the US and some perspectives of what's happening with some of our other uh, customers. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of call deflection in general and how we look at it and how we approach it. And then I'm going to hand over to Dee, uh, who's going to actually take us through the case study and some of the results. Um, and then we're going to show you a little video, I think, along the way. We're going to do a poll or two just to get your perspective on things and see how it's impacting you. And again, I think in the spirit of uh, the CCMA, this is about sharing information so that uh, people help each other. Uh, I think that's the general, it's one of the, unfortunately, one of the, one of the good things that's come out of this whole thing is that people actually are beginning to get back to basics and help people more. And we've certainly seen it here in the US and where I live. People are more willing to say hello, to talk to, to help and just see how things are. So it's one of the nice things. And I think that's what uh, we want here today is if we can help anybody, uh, we're more than, help, uh, more than happy to do that. So uh, Cormac, just move to the next slide, please. And I'll give a quick introduction to ServiceBot. Um, ultimately, um, we think about ServiceBot as being uh, automation. This is really about automating key customer interactions. Um, we, um, we do it across all of a number of different channels. So we're channel agnostic in terms of how, how we automate. But actually, more importantly, we're 
we look upon this as helping automate different parts of the customer journey. So this, we help customers not just on the inbound support area, but actually we help customers in the customer acquisition side, on the operations side, renewals, loyalty, and so on and so forth. And what we're trying to drive here is specific business outcomes, business results. So we're doing automation to help improve the customer service, improve the customer engagement itself, but also to actually drive a business result. Um, we've been working with the AA for about 18 months. Now the AA were one of our first customers and they have deployed a number of um, automation solutions. And what's interesting, their first one was actually on the customer acquisition side. They actually uh, built a solution. They built it, we didn't. Um, they built a solution to actually automate uh, conversions from a website. Um, so really interesting in terms of they are doing acquisition, they're doing customer support, um, and as I say, they're also our first one that we've helped with called Deflection. So it'll be interesting to hear uh, Dee's story about that. So that's what we do. We help automate key customer interactions. Um, and I think in general, uh, Cormac, if you move to the next slide, please. I think in general, you will see, I saw a report in the finance industry is that one of the big things that's going to be post-COVID, and people are talking about post-COVID, this post-COVID world, people are going to be talking about automation a lot, lot more in this post-COVID world. Whoever thought that, you know, when you think about disaster recovery and business continuity, nobody, nobody, certainly none of the people I've ever talked to in the States ever thought that we'd have this concept of, you would not have people being able to work uh, together in a shared center, right? So nobody had a disaster recovery or business continuity plan that envisaged 100 people, 500 people, 1,000 people working from home, right? So it's a brand new world and it has created all sorts of problems I think that nobody's even thought they'd have, right? Um, we have one customer that we work with, he's a large outsourcer. And if people think they had an Ireland, you know, people, normal companies think they have problems getting people working from home. This outsourcer had 30,000 people in, uh, I think, Philippines. And their problem was they couldn't have people work from home because those people had no internet access and no computers and so on. So they actually had to build in the space of a week housing for something like 10 or 15,000 people to actually keep those people uh, on site uh, to be able to do it. So it is completely disrupted a number of industries. I think we're going to see a major, major changes in how we do business coming out of this. We've al we'd already been seeing a trend towards companies doing more insourcing uh, bringing things back in-house uh, than previously, but certainly when you rely on a partner that you know, like a large outsourcer, that suddenly you know uh, has people in you know different countries that don't have the infrastructure to support from home, you know, you're going to rethink your business continuity, your disaster recovery. So, I think it's really going to change uh, a lot of things. As I say, I think we're going to see a lot more automation, um, and we're going to see a lot more cloud. Uh, we're going to see more decentralized systems and it's going to have a real, real impact uh, for it. Um, everywhere I go, every every you know service provider I ring, the first thing they do is they say, I'm sorry, due to COVID, we're restricting our service hours, we're restricting the number of people in our contact centers, uh, we're going to have to sort of get back to you. And you can see that this is having a big impact uh, on customer service and customer experience. Now, people are being patient about it. But if this happens again and again and again, and who knows um, how often this is going to happen over the next sort of 10 or 15 years, um, people aren't going to be so um, patient the next time. I think we're going to have to solve some of these problems, and that's what we're here to do today. So, Cormac, if you move to the next slide. Um, do you want to launch the uh, the poll call at this point? Oh, poll, yes, uh, Cormac, good idea. So, just launch a poll. Uh, we've done up a poll just to see um, how COVID is impacting. So, we'd love to get your uh, um, impact, uh, input on this, so please select. Is has it had an impact? How much of an impact does it has? And we'll share the results uh, with you after. Okay. Um, so go ahead and select it. That's great. Everyone's voting away there now. <clears throat> right. So again, this is just sort of informal, just to see how it's impacting. Everybody can see the results. Um, but I think it's it's. You know, okay, let me close this now for your call. So uh, thanks, there Carl. the results are. <clears throat> I'm just going to share them on the screen. All right. Um, so we're seeing, wow. So um, 
about 40, 38% are the same or lower. So the, so the, the majority is definitely up um, somewhat um, and 46% is 50% or greater, right? So 46% of you are seeing 50% or greater um, impact on your contact center from COVID, right? Um, so that's interesting. So a couple of industries are obviously a couple of sectors lower. So obviously uh, I'm sure the, um, well, I was going to say, I'm sure the cruise lines are having a lower, but actually probably people coming up to cancel on them. Uh, but I'm sure there's some industries that are just, people aren't doing it, aren't going there. But obviously it is impacting everybody. Okay, thanks Cormac. So let's look, look move ahead now to the next uh, um, slide. So, so we're talking about, we have a three step approach to um, sort of deflection automation. We talk about deflect, automate uh, and integrate. And I'm just gonna uh, tee this up then for uh, Dee to tell the story. Uh, deflection is obviously, we're, we're trying to deflect calls away from um, a human to try and move it into an automation realm. Um, but I think what is interesting about the case study here is we made sure that it wasn't just deflect and automate. Um, the third part is integrate, is that you have to find a way of, if you can't solve the problem, if the AI can't solve the particular problem, you've got to find a way to uh, allow it to go back to a person, to a human, or to at least integrate it with data so uh, you can transact and you can do certain things. So we talk about deflection, which is moving it from one channel to another. We talk about automation, which is applying the AI. Um, and again, we're using AI here, natural language, uh, to understand the intent, whether it's a voice spoken or whether it's via chat. Uh, and then, so the integrate phase is really about integrating with existing systems. If you look at the next slide, I just wanted to show one concept of um, active call deflection for us is only one part of how you could introduce automation into an organization. There are, so we talk about at a very minimum, you could introduce automation by doing something like simple, like out of hours response, where instead of closing your contact center or your live chat, you provide an automation solution that deals with out of hours, if nothing other than to answer simple queries, automate simple things, um, but perhaps even capture information to say to the customer, I hear you, I can take your details, we don't have anybody now, but we will tee this up for somebody to call you back in the morning. So we see active call deflection as being a range of things that can be used to help introduce automation into the organization. It generally starts out of our response. Uh, we're gonna to talk today about the active call deflection, which is you wanna move it from an overburdened channel or from uh, sometimes your peak call times into another channel. And then we talk about query triaging, which is you know, trying to understand what the problem is and then either route it to the correct person uh, via a queue, via live chat, via email, or actually tee up and, and take details from a customer in preparation for uh, maybe an offline handover. Uh, so tee up an email, tee up a work task, but grab their details, get their details so that when somebody comes in the next morning, they can actually do that. So we have a range of sort of ways in which you can introduce automation. Uh, cold deflection is a good one. Um, and we're going to look at, I think, call deflection and warm handoff um, today. So move to the next slide. Here, the kind of benefits that we're seeing from this, so from this introducing automation. So at a minimum, we're, we're seeing improvement in up to sort of 15% sort of uh, lower service cost by just implementing what we call a reception, which is out of ours, uh, being able to handle inbound queries and deflect 24-7, but not really doing a lot of integration here. So simply by being able to move it over, maybe deal with some FAQs, low touch integration here, we're actually seeing some big improvements just from that alone. When you add on chat triage um, to that sort of automation, you then get more uh, improvement in productivity. You get better, um, you get to lower your service cost because we're actually capturing some of that information ahead of time. Uh, without the need for a human to do it. So we're asking for their account number, we're asking for their problem, we're asking some, for some diagnosis, um, or if it has to do with a renewal, we're capturing some details, maybe some changes. Um, you can actually improve productivity quite significantly just by automating and then triaging, again, even without doing a lot of automation. And then the, the real power comes from when you start to automate um, things like renewals and onboarding and collections and other areas. Uh, where you need integration with those backend systems. That's really where you see the power of automation.
but it can be a step journey. It can be as simple as automate your out of hours, automate your call deflection, start to triage, and then the journey is towards automation. And this is just the way we think about introducing automation uh, into the organization. So with that, I'm going to stop. I'm going to let's show you a little video of call deflection in action, and then I'm going to hand over to D and let D um, tell you the AA story about how this came about. So, uh, Carmen, can you trigger the video? Sure. Just give me one moment here. Uh, while you're doing that, Cormac, Carl, we have a question in, which yep. just go with that, Cormac. So Jeff has asked, are you helping customers calculate the return on investment of your solution with cost savings from call deflections? Uh, yes, and I think Dee is going to share some uh, details um, from the case study today, so I'm not going to steal Dee's thunder on that one. But yes, we do. Okay, great. So this is just a video of it actually in working, a little demo of it working. and. Um, Hello, welcome to customer service. We are experiencing high call volumes at present. Our wait time is more than 10 minutes. Press one to receive a link to our virtual assistant where you can get immediate assistance. assistant now with that pressing one what we actually did was when I press one we transfer the call from their IVR ACD over to a cloud ACD and we use AWS connect for that step so we, we transfer the call over to AWS connect within AWS connect which is as you know a cloud contact center uh, Amazon connect um, we can understand whether they're calling from a mobile number if they're calling from a mobile number we're going to send them an SMS link to their the device if they're not calling from a mobile number, we can ask them for their mobile number. Um, we send them a link via SMS um, to a virtual assistant. That's just a, a mobile web interface. It opened up immediately on their device. And now we have them in a, in a chat channel where we can actually start to present them information, maybe the top queries, frequently asked questions. Um, and we then tried, and that little video showed, and again, we'll, we'll share this video with you. It showed then that we tried to actually automate some things. So some things could actually be automated there, but if they weren't, we allowed them to escalate and to hand over um, to a human. So we had deflection, uh, we had automation in that little video, and we had integration in that video, those three steps from it, right? And again, very simple thing to do, very easy to set up, and with that, I'm going to hand you over to Dee, and Dee can talk about a practical example of it. Dee, over to you. Great. Thank you, Carl. Um, okay, so if we move on to the next slide, yeah. Um, so just in terms of a quick introduction, so my name's Dee. I um, am Director of Contact Centre Transformations for the AA. Um, I'm relatively new to the company, uh, but have worked in call centres since probably 2004, a little bit in college before that. Um, and have uh, have now made it and made it somewhat of a career for myself, um, which is probably not the plan I originally had. So to cover off our bot journey, um, about 18 months ago, the AA and ServiceBot engaged to um, solve a problem, which was really um, around how to improve our conversion with increasing uh, PPC costs. Um, we were seeing not the same return on a on a conversion rate that we had hoped. So the the products that we we went with then was how can a chatbot help us in this online journey um knowing that if a customer calls us into a contact center we have a much greater rate of converting them so we spent a lot of time with agents we spent a lot of time with our digital team to understand the the online journey and where customers were falling out of it uh, where they were falling down and how we can use the knowledge and the skills of a phone agent to build a chatbot that will um, support a customer through that. So that's when Quote Helper was born. So that was down the back end of 2018. Um, Quote Helper presents on the price presentation page um, of a, your insurance quote and allows you to go through a series of scenarios, helping you in discounting it, helping you in understanding why the price is there and what could lower your price. 
um, you know, for example, if you have a, a second car in the household, etc. Um, so, so that has been very, very successful, and we saw some great results from that. Um, then the CX bot, bot was launched shortly afterwards, and that was to try and alleviate some of the pressure in in a department that was kind of straining from a, a resource perspective. Um, we then launched two smaller bots, which were for travel and membership, which are are two of our uh, kind of smaller products. Um, they these bots work like very much like an FAQ bot. Uh, they're quite simple, and we're working on refining and developing those then. Now and then uh, we we ended up with the pretty much immediate need as a result of selling travel insurance to have um, a, a voice bot or something to help with the the, the volume on the lines that we had there. Um, so I suppose the most important thing for us was that all of our our experience with with bots has been between service bots and the business side of the of the company, uh, rather than having IT lead and drive a bot project. So the the platform is very easy to use. We've recently had a new starter, and within her first month, she has had she's received training and has been able to start building and tweaking our bot flows. Um, so it's very intuitive. It it doesn't require you to be um, a developer to use it, and I think that's the most attractive thing about working with ServiceBot, and also the small uh, the kind of the personal relationship that we have because we we worked with them quite early on in their journey. Um, it's it's been great to have that personal kind of touch with them with them, um, and obviously uh, an Irish company makes it a little bit easier to do business. Um, so that's good. So if we want to move on to the next slide. So our problem statement really uh, started with the, this, this kind of the European spike of the coronavirus. Um, as we saw more travel restrictions coming in, we saw um, changes. We saw Disneyland closing uh, globally. Um, and day to day and intraday, these changes were coming so quickly and so fast paced that we were really barely able to keep up on top of it. So we saw a huge spike in people purchasing travel insurance um, for say trips that were coming up that maybe hadn't been covered, but then immediately contacting us to understand would they be covered if if something happened. Um, and our communications A to our customers uh, through our CRM platform just couldn't keep up with the the growth of and and the new information that we were required we were required to give and that customers were looking for and we didn't want to also explode in people's inboxes um, so all of our correct information was online we just really needed to focus on how we could tell customers on the phone channel that they needed to go there um, so I suppose that's that's where we went to service bots with that problem of this this forecast. Um, versus reality situation, which everyone in a call center understands is is a critical pain point. Um, and and how could we how could we kind of nip that in the bud and and move these customers effectively without being detrimental to their, their customer experience to a digital channel um, while feeling like they were within the same channel. So literally within 48 hours, we spun up this bot um, again. It was uh, between myself, uh, service bots, very little input from IT, just having them facilitate the transfer to the AWS phone number um, from our own line based on an option selection. I think IT themselves were so surprised at how straightforward it was because um, based being on a server-based ACD, uh, you normally think you can't do things like uh, phone to message deflection, but, but here we were proving that it could be done and could be done quite quickly. Um, so we managed to launch it on the 9th of March and uh, on the, the second level of our IV or menus. So, you know, we were giving people their specific product offerings. And then when they went into those offerings, uh, advising them that they can press six to have your question answered by text. Uh, so if we move on to the next slide. Gee, sorry, just one question in there from Susan. Yeah. Is there a particular type of person or skill set that suits staff to build bots? So I would say yes, it's someone who's quite process orientated, so who can think through something in a very logical um, series of actions, as well as someone who's able to work with a large pool of people to know, you know, what should our bot say? How should it behave? What should it do? And do we want it to appear like a person or appear like a bot? You know, how do we add that personal touch, which was important to us, 
while also letting people know that this is this is an automated solution and, and we can pass you off to a real person um, if needed. So I would say someone who's who's logical and process uh, focused. I mean, I I think that uh, anyone with experience in contact centers um, is is experienced in in process thinking, uh, whether or not they. They feel like they are. I'm not saying you need to be a black belt in Lean Six Sigma to, to build a bot. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. I would say you need to be able to think, think through through a process quite logically, map it out, and then determine what you want the bot to, to do for you. Great, thanks. Um, okay, thanks. So, so the solution uh, that we've kind of touched on there was to to build um, a solution that would shift our voice calls to messaging um, using all of our existing technology as much as possible. Um, I did bypass a few of our IT processes that I had to then retrospectively go through to make sure that we ticked all the boxes. Um, but essentially, we wanted to make sure that we could use our existing tech as much as we could, um, reduce any costs. So we had. Uh, we have some costs, obviously, by sending out the customer an SMS um, that was in line with what our current CRM um, text messaging costs. So that was okay. I didn't have to get too much support on that. Um, and again, the target, the aim was to, to reduce the calls um, by 100 a day um, for the travel lines, which were currently um, at around 400% of forecast. Um, there wasn't too much of a focus on our other CX calls at this time because we we knew we had the resources to cope with them if we could take the travel volume away. Um, so once the customer went through the the process and received the text, they they clicked on a link that was sent to them. That link opens up the the chat as you saw in the video um, within a browser on your on your mobile, and it's very much it feels like a WhatsApp style conversation. Um, they they rooted straight into our CX bot where we had added in additional content and additional FAQs um, and links to, to help customers self-serve there and then gave an option to hand over to an agent if they needed it. So that CX bot is is live on the AA website. Like I said, it was the second bot that we launched. Um, it It's quite a simple bot in that it's a, a question answer bot, um, but it, it's so effective at deflecting calls and it proved so effective in managing this uh, this volume uh, that that we were seeing. Um, as well as that, uh, service bots helped us with putting some some appropriate bannering and messaging on the bot. For you know, if you're if you're looking for COVID information, like click here, so that they they could just go straight into what they needed, and and adding it to the the upfront menu options. Whereas before, obviously, um, it wouldn't really have been there. We were more focused on having people renew their car insurance policy through this bot than and asking whether or not a virus that originated in China was going to affect their holiday in Spain in six months time. Um, so we did some new bot training and um, we had a new starter around this time as well. So uh, Valerie did a lot of process mapping uh, for the CX bot to make sure that we never left a customer kind of in a, in a bot loop because we know that can be so detrimental to a customer's experience and that those handovers to agents were available. Um, we onboarded additional agents into our chat team uh, quite quickly, um, which actually proved uh, to be a, a little bit forward thinking given the, the next changes that came within the Irish business environment. Um, and, and those agents were able to facilitate the, the few handovers that were coming, but essentially the, the bot served the purpose of, of self-service and reassurance for customers that you know, we, we would be able to give them the most up-to-date information that they needed um, through that. The other great thing is that that link on their SMS stays active. Um, so if they if they feel that they need to go and get that information again, they can go back in through that link to the CX bot. So it's always there in their phone, which is, which is brilliant. Um, so that was great. Um, OK, so we can move on to the next one. Um, okay, so I've covered off pretty much how it works. So uh, here we have the customer helper. So we we added a red banner on the top of that, as I said, to, to talk about Corona, um, which we've taken off now as our as our volume has kind of stabilized. Um, if if they went through for information about coronavirus, we sent them the link to our most up-to-date FAQs. Um, and then we did a handover to our web chat agents if it was required. Um, again, from the travel side of things, the information, the handovers were very 
uh, rarely required um, because they did get the information that they needed, which was straight from our underwriter on our FAQ page. Um, so we, we're, we're seeing a great deflection right there of 11%. Um, that's about 200 calls a day. And actually what we've seen now um, as travel has kind of stabilized in, in terms of volume, that customer is from um, other parts of the business because we moved this from just the travel line to our, our first main menu. Um, our, our existing customer base are able to use this for a lot more um, than than just coronavirus so they they're being that self-service message is really being promoted to them very early on in the IV or journey and they understand that they can help with, they can get help with their renewal um you know all the list the the options that you see there around document requirements uh, check levels of cover or anything else um which includes purchasing a new policy uh they can they can do all of that through um through our, our cx bot but maybe they would never have known about it beforehand that's great. Um, move on to the next one. So here are the results. Um, so the travel call volume. So you can see here from the end of February, we were um, a bit up and down uh, in, in terms of forecast. Uh, the very concrete dips that you can see there are generally Saturdays when we operate on a half day um, and our volume would be um, a little, a, a good bit lower anyway. Um, so we have seen that we see no negative feedback from customers. Um, they have, uh, they they are quick to come back to us if they they do experience issues with the bot. Um, our MPS has been um, improved has improved within the area, so that would be the phone MPS of those customers who are um, hanging to to speak to someone for a non travel related query. Um, we've seen that move by ten points. Um, and then we've had uh, 4,000 uh, customers interact with our CX bot um, over March, which is compared to February, sorry, we've up 4,000 compared to February, which is since we've widened the scope to cover travel and, and to promote more use of that. And then, like I said, we're seeing between 160 and 220 calls deflected a day. Um, so it, all in all, it's been very, very successful. Uh, the business love it. Um, um, the uh, financial controller really loves it um, and from a customer side it's giving us the ability to focus on the customers that we know we can help with more complex transactional queries than those that were that were ringing with the information that the bot could have given them so uh, thank you um, and I think we'll move on to the next slide Yep, so I yeah, think this is just a uh, summary, I think, yeah. Yeah, summarizing it off. So, Carl, do you want to take this? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think uh, Dee has given uh, a great example. The, the deflection part is very simple, as Dee mentioned. It's very simple and straightforward to do. I think the reason the, the AABOT was so successful is because they thought through what how they wanted to do. They tied it into something that they had sort of already there. And they thought about it beyond just the, you know, the one issue of how do we deflect it. They 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 had a plan for expanding it to cover other areas, and I think that was the key. So as I say, the tech stuff is easy enough to do. We can do that very very simply. Um, but it's really about okay, what do you do when you deflect the call? Then how do you handle it? Um, the AA, you know, had already integrated with human handover, so they had already said from the very start, you know, when we want our bots, if the bot can't handle it, we want people to be able to escalate and speak to a human. And I think that, personally, I think that's a very important part of automation, is that it's not automation only, it's automation first, right? Um, and by doing it like that, you, you can see they, they took care of the concerns in the early days, um, you know, they allowed people to escalate if they wanted, but interestingly that they didn't want when they were calling about coronavirus because they got the information they needed but they had the choice to do that and i think um they've done a really good job of integrating it with um others we're actually doing another project here in the us at the moment um around mortgage protection because uh, i think similar to europe if anybody who just mentions covid19 um to their mortgage provider they they get automatically a six month um or they can apply for a six month forbearance on their mortgage uh, and so we're helping this company do the same thing, which is deflect 
um, concerned people and then move them into applying for this sort of mortgage forbearance. But it's all about what's your plan once you do deflect. You have to have a plan to deflect, um, whether that's deflect to an existing website, to an existing form, and then how do you deal with somebody who gets nervous and really wants to talk to a human? I think that escalation to a human, we believe, is an important part of it. So again, we're happy to answer questions. I know we've got about 10 minutes. I prefer to open it up to any questions from the audience now. Um, did we have a second poll? I'm sorry, did we have a second poll? We have a second poll. We can launch that now, Carl, if you'd like. Let's launch that, Cormac, and just see who's already working in, in with automation and with chatbots. And then if anybody's any questions, please feel free to put them in the channel and we're happy to answer anything we can. As I say, our goal is just to give you whatever information that it, if it can help you. Um, I'll kick off with one question, probably for Dee. Dee, what has been the, the staff reaction? I know you guys had already gone down the, the chatbot route prior to the, the recent uh, development. But what has been the staff feedback and reaction to the introduction of the, of the bot? So um, that's a really good question. And I suppose there's a couple of different pools of, of staff to think about. So from um, the phone agents who were being bombarded, um, they are delighted because uh, for them, these were very low value calls. We weren't able to to offer much more to a customer than than was written on the website, um, and the website was was as up to date as our agents always were. Um, so they were just happy to to see the pressure ease and to come back in line with forecast uh, where we where we when we were able to. Um, from the management perspective, then again, I think they 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 were surprised and and. Um, delighted with how quickly we could spin something up that seemed very complicated but actually used so much of what we already had today um, so that uh, that is really reassuring um, for for the future um, as I mentioned you know I, I'm quite recent to, to the AA uh, so to be able to, to launch something so successful uh, quite quickly as well was was great from my own personal per, um, perspective um, from a chat agent perspective, they didn't really notice the difference because these uh, chats didn't end up really rooting to the, the ones specifically on travel didn't really root to an agent. They they more or less got answered and handled within the bubble um, of the chatbot. So they didn't notice the, the the pain points that that you know the the phone agents were really dealing with. Um, so yeah, so good all around positive. Great, and I, I don't know you want to look at the results of the poll there, Carl, but one other question has come in, which is, what is the success rate of the bot? Uh, Michal has asked that. So I suppose it determines on, on what we're going to measure um, for success rate. For me, the success rate was taking these low value calls out of the contact center and, and seeing that travel volume come back in line with forecast and start dipping below forecast now um, is really how I would measure success. Um, you know, people are um, bizarrely still continuing to purchase travel insurance um, and they are also, um, you know, questioning today their travel insurance for, for you know, uh, holidays that they may have planned towards the end of the year. So we do still receive volume there. Again, the bot and our chat agents are, are there to, to handle those that, that don't want to, to wait on the phone. Um, so I would consider those two the main measures of success, um, taking that workload out and not having to try and resource for it at a time when it's obviously would have been extremely difficult to onboard any kind of agent capacity really has just um, has been great. Well, let me give you some other metrics on that one um, in terms of success rates that we're seeing across sort of industries. Um, when you send a link, an SMS link, as most people know, it's a very high open rate on sort of SMSs in general, right? Um, but so let's say it's a you know, 97, 98% open rate, which is the industry standard for SMS anyway. We're seeing a, probably an 80% plus engagement across all our customers when they open up a link um, that they'll actually engage with the bots. So we're seeing sort of 80% plus engagement rate, which is quite high, uh, you know, way higher than if, if you got a, a, an unsolicited email. So we're seeing a very high engagement rate with the bot. Um, and I know from previous work that the AA had published in a case study, and it's on the site, um, is that they're seeing a high engagement where once they engage with the bot, um, they they see a low sort of escalation, 
if they engage with the bot on this quote side, they're seeing a very high sort of correlation between that and sort of engagement within um, within their business. So, um, so success is quite high in terms of getting people to engage. Beyond that, it's up, I think, to the custom to to the company themselves, right? You've got to figure out what you do when you get that person in there and how you deal with them. And you know, it's a it's a testament to D and her team that they managed to increase their NPS scores by 10, 10 points because getting the person in there is one thing, but how you deal with them, that's going to determine whether your you know NPS is going to go up or not. So, I mean, I see that about you know thirty eight percent of you are already working with bots, so that's great. Fifty four percent are are not so again something to think about any other questions well as i said we've got a few minutes left more than happy dorothy to answer any more questions either um, I, think, I think the only other question i i that that i would have myself would be the whole um how important the human handover is for, and how complex that that is to integrate it to the call deflection solution so that that, that, that whole aspect of how you fit the technology with the human interaction yeah. So I, what we've seen is, and again, I'd be interested in these thoughts. So we've seen two things. When you do, um, when you put a bot on a website that you already have information there, and you can actually use that website to direct from the bot to place on the website where there is information. So we've seen things like if they have forms or already got that information, maybe hidden on the website, but it's not easy to get at. Asking a bot a question, you can use the website to actually divert them to where that information is when you're on a voice it's different you're on a voice call you don't have the website there to to work with um so i think it becomes more important when you're on your mobile device and on voice uh whereas on the website you can direct them to you know where you may have that information already it's just they don't know how to go and find it or they're too lazy to go and find it in some cases they're they just ask they want to ring up and ask so d any thoughts on that yeah, so I tend to agree. I mean, I think that um, being able to point people within a website is is really powerful and, and the automation and the, the technology of a bot to be able to do that is great. Where we have seen the most important elements of human handover is really in our sales process. Um, it for While our bot is great at closing sales, there's always that small element of the customer that just wants that little bit more and is asking something quite obscure or has a, a scenario that's quite unique to them um, that they just want to know the answers for. So by being able to, to route that to our Zendesk application, which is how we handle our web chats, um, our, our customers get the attention they need quite quickly. Um, I mean, from how we we manage that then when we receive the tickets, we can see the whole transcript from the bot. We can understand um, what led the customer there, but we can also see their web page journey. So understanding the pages that they visited before the handover, um, if they if they were on our site before, is also um, is also really effective. Um, so I think the handover is important in like, and and the weighting of that importance varies depending on the um, I suppose depending on the situation. So okay. some customers require it more delicate than others. Um, just one last question. I'm really conscious of time. We've really only got a couple of minutes left. Thanks for that, T. Paul has asked, how do you overcome consumer security concerns around clicking links received by SMS? Um, yeah, and we've seen that in a couple of our uh, customers. We also uh, work with another company in Ireland called uh, Chill. And one of the things we had to do in the first time we worked with them is they wanted to make sure that the branding was was from them. So you do it by using, by first of all, you know, using a, maybe an existing service that the company has. If they've already got SMS uh, and it's a known number, that that helps. Certainly by uh, introducing um, the text as it's not introduced as from service, but it's introduced as from the AA uh, or whatever your client's name is, right? Um, so I think it's it's general uh, good practice with using SMS. I think we're going to see this issue get less and less as things like Apple Business Chat come in and other services where you're going to see native messaging on a device from a trusted brand. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing growth in Apple Business Chat and in you know Samsung have deployed messaging as a platform on all of their devices so that you can have that trust that it's coming from a trusted brand. 
But it's a very good question. It's very important that you make sure you introduce it as this is the brand calling because that's that's what they're trusting. Great. Yeah, and just to add to that, in our case, um, our customers have invited that SMS to be sent to them. So it's a little bit different from an outbound, you know, campaign it, where they might receive something out of the blue. In this case, they know that they're engaging with us. OK, really conscious of time. So, Carl, do you want to just go through your mention, your trial run, your call to yeah, As I say, we're more than happy um, to we're obviously very happy just to help anybody who, who has an issue. Um, it's very easy to set up. We're happy to explain how it, how to do it, uh, and we're running sort of trials at the moment for anybody who wants to just test it out and try it. Um, easy to set up. You can try it out sort of for free. Uh, give us a call. There's the um, email address, or go and check out the details at that link. Um, but again, this is you know this is just about helping people in a certain situation, and you know we're more than willing to do it. Brilliant. Well, we're exactly on time. So just want to say a big thank you to Dee in particular and obviously to Kahal as well. Thank you so much. I think that was really useful. And I know, Dee, if people want to have a more detailed chat with you, you're available. If they want to drop me an email, I can introduce you. Yeah, and the absolutely. Uh, so thanks to everybody for their participation. Uh, as I say, a recording and a copy of today's presentation will be available. Uh, and any further questions come back to me. And everybody stay safe and stay well. Take care. Thanks, 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 thanks Cormac. Thanks, thank you.